I woke up this morning more excited for a pay-per-view than I have been in years and years and years. There was two guys trying to kill each other now. Now, 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 now. For God's sake, get the replay or whatever you do, buy the show, watch this match. This match alone justifies the price. As the bell rings and Jade just grabs Ty and kisses her right in the lips. The best worker in this match was Jade's double stick tape. <laughs> the best entrance, which is CM Punk coming out to his Ring of Honor theme song. He's got his ROH gear. He's got like the basketball shorts. Uh, someone pointed out it looked exactly like the jacket and shorts he had in his last Ring of Honor match. MJF was a huge fan of CM Punk dating back to the Ring of Honor days. He wanted the old CM Punk. He's getting the old CM Punk. The ref starts reaching in his sleeve and he's like going like this. And I'm watching the ref. And the ref, I, he's like, he's desperately getting up at like there's a giant fucking spider in there or something. And he's reaching around in here forever. And like he's all distracted. And I'm like, what the fuck is this referee doing? And finally he gets down on his knees. And then, you know, next thing you know, MGF's bleeding all over. A whole bunch of people messaged me that were watching this in a bar. And they go, when fucking Wardlow found the ring yes. and put it on the apron, the fucking bar just went crazy. Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker. Hmm. I didn't like this very much. I, did, I thought this was the low point of the show. These two had that lights out match, and it was great. And they have never recaptured that magic when they're in the ring together. But I'm watching these close-ups of Danielson punching and kicking and kneeing John Moxley in the gut and ribs. They needed that 4K slow motion camera for uh, replay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you would have seen so much jiggling flesh oh, in this <laughs> fucking match. Tom <laughs> texted me and he said, this was all the stars in the Milky Way. Yes. I just went with a, a million, because I'm not sure how many stars are in the Milky Way. But you know what? Whichever is more, a million or the number of stars in the Milky Way, that's how many fucking stars this match gets. This faction has now been a thing for approximately, what, 90 minutes? Uh, it's already the greatest faction I ever saw in my life. <laughs> okay. I was reading this book about bats. The book explains that a bat cannot stand and then take off. Okay. A bat can only fly, fall from a great height and then fly. Gotcha. Sting is now a bat. He just goes up on something really high and he falls. He, he did not jump through these tables. <laughs> no, he, he fell. Just, he fell. When this came out, it had heat immediately because the fans decided they wanted to make Adam Adam jokes. As we noted. Let's go Adam, they chanted. Uh, let's go, Adam. Adam sucks. This is Adam. This is Adam. Said him, this is awesome. That's my raw siren. Brian Alvarez, Vince Verhey, Craig Proper Jr., Granny here, and we are uncooked, uncut, and uncensored. Hey, <laughs> we fucking got it right on the first try without even practicing. That's right. Look at Craig. Look at Vinny. Vinny was the smartest one because he actually thought of growing a beard and then shaving a mustache so he could look exactly like Rob Bartlett. What's the plan? Rob Bartlett is the man He tried the best he can Vince on the new What Rob Bartlett's gonna do to you Vinny V, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three-way Oh Here comes the commentator Rob Bartlett, he's a great imitator of Vince McMahon Rob! What? Wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody! There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the, the tone of the voice, you know? <laughs> He still got it. <laughs> he still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He was born August fifteenth, eighteen seventy five. And so died you, April 28th, 1946. He died in, okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. McMahon says, I don't know why anybody would want to see this. I was like, fool, you booked this. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and every time we break for commercial, Vince would lean over and say, can you believe the athleticism? <laughs> <laughs> he said that to you? Yeah, you gotta, oh, you, you gotta give these guys credit. You're gonna go to the Brian and Vinnie Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. 
All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, 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 aye. Well, there you go. It's very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, lucky fella. I'm. Uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. That's how excited I am. Very small portion of the crowd, small but vocal portion of the crowd, chanting "What at him?" and he shuts them down like nobody has ever shut them down before. He just turned right out and said, "Steve Austin's not here. There's no point in what you're doing. You're just dumb." And there you go, everyone. The inner circle is dead. Born in the first episode of Dynamite, September nineteenth, twenty nineteen. Died on this most recent episode, March 9th, twenty twenty two. Hey, man, Paige. Then face Dante Martin. In an NXT championship match. Uh, some of you think, Vinny, you have your notes confused here. You're viewing AEW, not NXT. No, this this was an NXT championship match. Came out of nowhere, had no build, went seven minutes. There was a three-minute commercial break in the middle, and it was over. It was pointless and dumb. I've never seen this guy so happy. Oh, good. Like, a pig in shit, I believe, was the term that was, uh, that was used. <laughs> like, Certainly not by himself. He's over the moon. He's just so happy. He's like... He's beside himself with joy. You brought me here to make you tag team champions. And they say, you're fired. <laughs> and they cut away. And we, I mean, it was the most abrupt. It's funny because like, uh, it's very, uh, it's very, uh, it's very TNA actually. The way they to the back, these segments. To the back. There was so much on this show that I feel it should have been on another show. And uh, as big as his pop was, they actually only had 3,000 people in this building. I just remember back to uh, Matt Hardy's debut, where they built it up, and they built it up, and they built it up, and right when he was about to debut, COVID hit, and he debuted in an empty building. Yeah. They had had 10,000 people in the building. Holy shit, they would have blown the fucking... And they blew the roof off this place even with 3,000. The acclaimed rap claims that Jungle Boy has never seen boobs yeah. and can't grow pubes. He did a rap a few months ago about... Uh, Jungle Boy and Anna J. I would have laughed if she had just come out and said, you're wrong, and then gone to the back. They fucking dropped poor Jungle Boy right on his head. I, see combo, I thought power he was bomb dead. Yeah, yeah. And Christian on the outside grabs his head and screams. And apparently Jungle Boy was fine, but holy fuck, don't kill that guy. Don't kill anybody. There should be a sign about the gorilla position right when you go through the curtain. Don't kill anybody. Paige Van Zant was going to feud with Brandy. Yeah. Brandy's gone. Right. Ty Conti is the new Brandy. Scorpio Sky, with the help of a thousand people, is the TNT champion, and immediately that title win is put to the side so that Paige, Paige Van Zant can sign her AEW contract on Ty Conti's ass. All right, full disclosure. Uh, as you know, Brian, I can only tolerate NXT with the assistance of alcohol, and I overshot my target a bit this week. <laughs> Finny. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, is there a reason? Do they train the women like when they need to run to stand, do a stutter step, and then run like this? Andre Chase's response is to point at him and say, quote, you disrespectful piece of shit. I'll beat the shit out of you. Have you not been paying attention to these segments, Vinny? Get a shot of my head, Jared. <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> I don't know what inspired that, honestly. I don't either. Lashing out with Lash Legend. This fucking segment. We had someone accuse someone else of having butt implants <laughs> yeah. on national television. A wrestler at that. I can't let that go. <laughs> I wrote, LA puts Waller in chair and smashes him. This may have been where the booze really kicked in. Persa and Duke then begin to make out. And Wade Barrett screams, I don't know who I'm more jealous of. And Vic says, What? I mean, he's a handsome Australian, don't get me wrong. I saw this, and I'm like, you guys are off TV. You are <laughs> off TV. Go back to fucking train, because fuck me. If I were in charge of this company, I can't put them in the ring right now. They're going to they're they're like, they're gonna kill somebody. I'm not even joking. No, this was so scary and dangerous. Dolph Ziggler's a, a fucking shooter. You could have easily brought him in, and he could have just gone on a tear and fucked people up right and left, make him into a big threat, build up Braun Breaker versus Ziggler over Mania Weekend, but no, he walks in, says he's a jobber, proceeds to fucking be a jobber multiple weeks in a row, and now he's a champion. Whatever, who cares? That That's is, NXT, everybody. That's the correct answer. Whatever, who cares? 